Welcome to the Sun and Fun 2021 Quick Take Episodes. All right, still here in uh, Sun and Fun 2021, Saturday, and uh, I want to stop by the Hawk Arrow 2 booth. Um, there's a few, few changes have happened over this past year or so. A new owner that wants to do some really neat new things. So I'm going to let uh, Joseph uh, Shirley introduce himself and where he's from. Yeah, my name is Joseph Shirley. I'm out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, we also have uh, facilities down here in Lakeland, uh, just outside of Lakeland. So Florida and uh, Ohio uh, as our home. And uh, one of the neat little facts uh, that I love to promote with this uh, kind of uh, new venture for us is that we're able to bring CGS back home to Ohio. And uh, that, that uh, records 41 years of of uh, the name CGS Aviation in Ohio uh, with the Secretary of State, which, which is a, a kind of fun little um, piece of history. And uh, as we go through the show, we've met a lot of fans of the airplane and hearing a lot of stories of the original um, legendary Chuck that uh, designed the plane and um, and was the character and force behind it. So. People are showing you pictures and such. Crazy things, yeah. yes, uh, and, and he was a he was a character in, in all ways. Uh, he had his own signature drink uh, called the muzzle loader that he would bring in jugs and with uh, skull and crossbones on it as if it were poison, and um, and uh, you know there's all kinds of stories and videos and uh, people that uh, had the original flyer from Chuck uh, for the aircraft. Uh, one gentleman had one from 1981, so it was really exciting. So, and you've taken this over about when? So about nine months ago, ten months ago now, I guess. Um, and uh, we've been working hard through COVID times to uh, to get things done. We've been working uh, really hard to get the airplane itself into CAD, uh, which allows us to uh, try to standardize the things that uh, were all handcrafted in the past. So um, we're, we're trying to keep things uh, as affordable as possible in these times where everything seems to be going up uh, through cutting down labor and, and keeping the costs down on that side versus uh, just the materials and and such. So, so your new role as owner or caretaker of this design is to kind of bring it up to more like a modernized, standardized uh, production? Yeah, so we have uh, CNC machines and other kind of equipment that uh, really help out uh, with getting everything as precise as possible. And that really is what cuts down on labor and labor costs. And so um, so that angle of attack uh, is, is what we're looking for. And then what that also allows us to do once we have the aircraft modeled is uh, things that, that kind of have been lingering is a, a better folding wing mechanism uh, and some other ways to make the wing uh, easily uh, folded uh, such as maybe a push rod system for the aileron controls uh, those are all things that will be a lot easier to do once the uh, once the birds into CAD and we're pretty far along in that process uh, the other thing that that'll also do is it'll allow us to uh, to create and integrate our CAD models into the build process for first-time builders um, this aircraft is really attractive it's simple and straightforward but that means there's a lot more detail that we need to get into the the manuals and uh, that the hand drawings that have been used up to this point um, really need some refining for uh, today's consumer and, and so that's what we're focused on and being able to do explosive views being able to show people literally how things flow together um, is uh, is been a part of the focus on that CAD model as well so this will become a, an even easier and quicker quick build moving forward and you're offering um, well, a couple different things and as a kit, uh, experimental, and then this behind us is actually an SLSA? Yeah, so the SLSA, we have it a lot of different flavors. So SLSA, ELSA, uh, full home build experimental, um, kit build, and I think what we're focused on is tr try to, to accommodate that uh, first time builder market and allowing uh, for them to get right into it without a whole lot of headache. And uh, some of the things we're trying to do is in our avionics package, for instance, uh, things will come pre-wired and ready to go, um, installed in the panel even with labels. So, so you, you order kind of 
uh, A, B, and C flavors of avionics, and then they come together um, where you're hooking up uh, powers and grounds uh, and some of the plumbing, and then you're off to the races. I, I think that's a big uh, hurdle and scary thing for first-time builders. So what, uh, if somebody were to order a kit and go the experimental route, um, what does it look like when it shows up and what is left to do to get it to fly? So what we um, have been doing a poll and survey during the show, uh, trying to figure out what what the uh, tolerance is for construction and asking the consumer, hey, uh, what do you guys, the builder, hey, what do you guys uh, think about us providing it in this sort of standard quick build form where the uh, superstructure is built in a jig, uh, everything's square, all the all the, mass the, the superstructure. Uh, superstructure. I like that. Yeah. Well, uh, it's the it's the bones, and uh, that that allows for still a lot of tasks to be done. So uh, all the wiring and plumbing and engine installation and avionics, uh, and this and then, and then the covers. Um, that's something about our aircraft. Um, Putting the covers on isn't a scary thought. Um, you know, when you're doing a standard traditional covering uh, like you might find on a Cub, um, there's a lot, that's a long process. Ours is pretty straightforward, uh, and the gentleman that uh, sews our, our sail covers has been doing it a long time. And this is the pre sewn Dacron cloth, correct? Envelopes? Yeah, the envelope system again has been refined over the last 40 years, so uh, so it's a, it's a proven system, uh, and everybody's worried about how long it'll last. And, and it's just like anything; you take good care of it, you understand its limitations, um, you treat it with some UV protectant, um, and you keep it inside as best you can. It'll last you a good amount of time. So, what engines do you currently have available, uh, or as options? So, with the SLSA, uh, we have two options uh, right now. Unfortunately, uh, our third option was the HKS, um, but that's out of production. So, we're we're sort of stuck with the 582 and the 912 UL, which is the 80 horsepower variant. So, an experimental. Obviously, is experimental, so sky's the limit. Yeah, sky's the limit on the experimental. Uh, we've talked to lots of different manufacturers. Uh, Yamaha engines are, are kind of a new thing that's being uh, used, and we've talked to the guys that make uh, make the gearboxes for those and kind of put those packages together. And so there, there are a lot of stuff on the horizon, I think, that'll be really appropriate for our, our airplane. So being that this is a pusher and is mounted up high on a post, and I see you've got some triangulation going on on that, is there a... Uh, what is the limiting, limiting factor to either horsepower or weight for an engine? Maybe. So for us, uh, with the SLSA, the uh, the 582 and the 912 UL at 80 horsepower has been tested. Uh, so for us to go beyond that, a lot of people, will, why don't you put the uh, ULS on with the 100 horse? And uh, yeah, it'll fit on there. It'll carry it. Uh, obviously, those engines are pretty pretty well weight wise, uh, very similar. Uh, but it, the superstructure is meant to be light and kept light, and so there would be some more testing that would need to be done to to, to be able to do that. Beauty about having our airplane in CAD finally is that we can do a lot of that virtually. We can say uh, we can give the the model some some uh, some ringing through and seeing what's what needs to be beefed up or what not doesn't. And uh, so there, that's some of the other things that we can kind of speed up the process of if uh, if we get down that road. We are partnering with great companies like Dynon Avionics, Airworks, AirTech Coatings. These sponsors make all of this original aviation content possible. So I invite you after this video to check out the links below and say hello to our sponsors. Tell them you found them here on the Experimental Aircraft Channel. All right, so tell me what it's like to operate and fly and, and some of the speeds that uh, you'd expect, you know, for, for take off, climb out, uh, what it stalls at you know all the important stuff yeah so uh, with our airplane it's all based around weight so uh, if you're a lighter person and you've got the smaller engine uh, you're gonna be able to stall a lot uh, 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 at a lot less speed um, our aircraft is one of the few in this category that has flaps so you're able to use that that flap system to to, to help uh, in that stall um, but you know Terry the gentleman that owned the business before me uh, that still helps me along in 
in this process uh, likes to say 50 50 50 so you take off at 50 you fly at 50 you land at 50 um, to keep it simple uh, I like that idea but uh, as your as your familiarity with the airplane grows as your skills grow with it and your confidence in it is uh, it's a simple airplane to fly everybody loves it um, you can push the envelopes so a little faster a little slower and going back to the airframe uh, design and more so the controls um, you're doing something a little bit different than a lot of the ultralight class if you will with the controls like on the ailerons talk to you about that for a second so uh, with the control, what we're what we're looking to do uh, is is use a push rod system, if that's what you're referring to. Well, and, and currently you're using pulleys and. Yeah, pull 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 on the on the other on, uh, very traditional as you would find in a lot of airplanes built in the 30s even. Um, and I think for us to make the folding wing a more viable option, uh, we need uh, everything to be a little more simple. And um, and a push rod system would definitely do that. It might be a little bit more and um, raw material cost, but uh, simplicity, uh, it'll be really straightforward. And one of my goals with any change that we make, it'll be something that will be easily retrofitable to all aircraft. So if we do it to our new airplanes, we want to be able to offer that up to everybody else. So that's something we're keeping in mind uh, when, when, we're, when we're doing any change like this. Sure. So what is uh, the price point? Let's start off with uh, uh, the builder side of things. If yeah. Well, first off, can you, can you order it as like in sections, like a lot of people start in a tail or I don't know, some type of control surface, or do you get the whole whole kit, and then what's the price point on a kit? So our aircraft is uh, a little bit different than maybe an RV or a RANS, where you can order different parts in different stages. Uh, everything's sort of built uh, together to match. So the boom uh, and the fuselage and the wings, they're all kind of built um, at the same time. And uh, so, so unfortunately, from that point of view, you have to build the, you have to buy the whole kit. And with uh, the the the, the kind of built up version that we're we're looking at uh, moving towards versus you getting a box of parts um, maybe more of a rolling chassis is sort of what we're leaning towards um, you know you're you're looking in the twenty thousand dollar range and we're, we're, we're not posting pricing right now only because uh, things are so volatile uh, so we're trying to make sure that we can keep it as affordable as we can without uh, boxing ourselves in yeah money Understandably, because two by fours are going up a dollar a week. It seems like right now for for construction of homes. Understand. Yeah, um, yeah. So that's the price point uh, around that area for uh, for a kit. Uh, moving on up, what else is there? So options. Um, you know, we, we've uh, we've upgraded the brake system, for example, to Matco uh, to more of a LSA standard for, versus uh, an ultralight standard brake. Uh, you know, in the old days, they weren't necessary options. Uh, brakes were optional and so uh, having a, a better brake and the aircraft behind us we were definitely concerned with that with the tire diameter being able to actually stop that wheel from turning uh, will take a bit of torque and so we work with Matco um, to to get a good combination of wheel brake tire rim uh, and axle um, and that's one of the other things that we work to be able to um, speed up production as well using Matco's axle um, that attachment point is, is is really straightforward and strong. So this is a lightweight aircraft. You got, uh, I think, 27-inch tires. Are they considered flotation devices at this point? At this point, they very well may be. Uh, if you have to ditch in the ocean, you might want to use one as uh, as a flotation device for sure. So, um, so I mean, we, we figured, it, you know, hey, what what makes sense? And uh, 27 inches is, is what we uh, what we were able to settle on. And uh, well, it definitely makes it look more fun. That's that's for sure. Yeah, we are. Uh, <laughs> we are. We're taking an aircraft that already has uh, pretty good stole capability, and we're putting some ridiculously large tires on it. And so, um, so this is the first of its of its kind for the Hawk, and uh, we'll see what it actually allows us to do. But I'm pretty confident it's gonna it's gonna do well. Awesome. So, what um, is roughly? I mean, everybody I've talked to in manufacturing right now in aviation is just absolutely busy. Ironically enough, with everything going on. Everybody wants to stay at home and, and build something. So uh, what would be the current lead time for if I ordered a kit today and get it delivered to my house? We're telling people between three and 
three and six months. Uh, we have two uh, quick build kits available right now uh, that we've been working on and uh, so those will be r relatively quick uh, and then uh, the future kits uh, three to six months. Uh, full builds um, I would say more like six months. Uh, once we get a back the backlog of aircraft builds uh, cleared out um, but I, I'm trying to standardize things keep the options uh, to a, a minimum that will allow us to uh, do things like pre-build wire harnesses, uh, pre-cut wires that we need to do for running batteries and such, and, um, and the plumbing, kind of keeping all that stuff standard, all the tedious stuff that takes a long time. Uh, if we can cut that time down, we can really speed up production. You say f um, full builds, let's talk about that just for a second here because it is an SLSA. What's the price point on your ready to fly? So ready to fly, the aircraft behind us, uh, we've got a price at 85000 and uh, I know that's a big number for an aircraft uh, um, like this, uh, for what people are expecting, and more ultralight pricing, but this is a full L L LSA, and uh, with the options, the Dynon, the uh, full Dynon touchscreen that, that you know, sounds overkill, but it really is appropriate if you, you really take a good look at it. Uh, it fits in our aircraft really well. And then the uh, the 912 is sort of at the top of our uh, price range uh, as far as options, optional engines, um, tailwheel and tires, those kind of things uh, kind of add into that price. So I would say between 65 and 85 is a good price range for a completed aircraft. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day to uh, talk about this and explain the new ownership. and. If somebody wanted to get in touch with you to order one or ask more questions, where do they go? CGSAviation.com um, and uh, my email is joseph at CGSAviation.com and 513-205-1650. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for watching this week's episode of the Experimental Aircraft Channel. Remember to like and subscribe. Check out our brand new website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.